welcome to the Sports Circus, and I'm Mike Golick. To the Sports Circus. I'm your ringmaster, Sal, live from Las Vegas in the Amp TV studio, AAMP.TV. Today's show is brought to you by UppercutChops.com. Check out their tasty selection of all natural, dry aged USDA prime Wagyu and Angus steaks and chops. Wait till you taste their best in class New York steaks, the filet mignon, of course, the king of all, those massive cowboy cut and tomahawk cut ribeyes. Best I ever had, probably be the best you ever had as well. Check them out at uppercutchops.com. That's uppercutchops.com. Or give them a call, find out what's for dinner. 702 799 9935. 702 799 9935 for uppercutchops.com. All right, and a big welcome in to everybody listening in on our CBS, NBC, and Fox Sports affiliates and independents from coast to coast, as well as everybody watching on Cox, Comcast, Spectrum, Frontier, Time Warner, and Wow Cable Television and hotel TV in over a half a million rooms from coast to coast in all Nielsen rated markets. We're here with a very special guest. He's been here before and we're bringing him back because we can and he's got some great stuff going on. In fact, we're going to let him introduce himself. Go ahead. Hey, Nick Bukai here. Happy to join the circus. Uh, it's been a long time. Yes, it's been a long time. And of course, Nick is one of my favorite guys for a bunch of reasons, but most important he was the voice of Salem, Salem Saberhagen, the talking cat on Sabrina, the Teenage Witch. I just love that. That was the best thing going. And you know what, Nick? It's just been going on from there. I mean, hell, that's about, what, about 30 years ago? You know what? I think you're right. It's funny. We, um, I went during the uh, strike. The, all, the, all the unions were on strike. And I went to, we had a, it was in Tampa. We did a, there was a 90s convention and i went there with the entire cast and i think they were it, it's definitely been over 25 years um and there were a whole bunch of uh, reunions of different casts there like 90210 and sabrina was there and like a uh, shoot full house i think and, and it was oh, wow. it was a, a lot of shows and it was really fun i got to see my old pals and meet a lot of cool people but the best thing was the uh the hotel bar Saturday night was the trippiest thing in the world because if you if you were an adolescent in 1993, this bar was would have been your the the, the most bizarre thing for you to walk in on in the world because it was all these sort of child actors grown up getting hammered wondering what happened it was fascinating. So <laughs> so you were theater. in there getting hammered with them, of course. I, I don't get hammered anymore. I cleaned up my act. All right. Hey, that's you know, good stuff. That terrible. I know uh, it's very sad. I had to. I reached the fork in the road, buddy. But there was a time when I would have been leading them down the path to destruction. <laughs> <laughs> well, so that path has been a very interesting one, though, because I mean, look, life happens. You evolve from comedian, actor, writer, producer. Da, 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 I mean, you've done it all, and so I want to get right to it right away. Because you've got something new that is really picking up a lot of steam. Tell everybody about that. Uh, the show Bookie, it's on Max um, streaming. It's out there. You can watch the whole first season, which is eight episodes. Um, and we actually um, we got the pickup for a second season. We're writing it now. We're going to start shooting it at the very beginning of next month. Um, so it all worked out. Uh, but it's a... Uh, Stars Sebastian Maniscalco, Omar Dorsey. Um, a lot of people know Sebastian. He's one of the biggest comedians in the world right now. And it's a show I wrote with Chuck Lorre, and it's about a, a bookie in L.A., which is, you know, California's one of the few places in the world where you can't place a legal bet still. So it's a bookie hanging on for dear life. It's a half-hour comedy. 
about a guy making book and and also just trying to live his life and and the people in his life and um i tell you it's the most fun i ever had doing a show sal it's great and i, I if you haven't seen it go binge it it's it, it worked out beautifully cast is a dream and we got to write a really fun show well you know it's something that i can relate to in a couple of different ways from when i was a kid growing up on the west side of chicago right i mean no bookmakers were legal there right so yeah. back in the day i was passing it's a very recent out. phenomenon that it's legal anywhere right you know Right. I mean, remember, remember the football cards, Nick? Remember those those cards? And it always seemed like, I mean, look, you would lose on a tie. So there's never the hook on any one of these bets for the football games, right? right. So it would always right. be a three or a four or whatever the hell. And you'd always end up losing by the hook because ties lost with those cards. Right. Yeah, no, I'm, you know, apparently guys can make a really, really healthy living if they just had that card uh concession <laughs> as it were if you had the right factory if you had the right plant in the right city and that was your turf just cards alone that was a really good line of work um and, and, and if you're from i'm from buffalo you're from chicago places like that yeah you know, the cards were a part of growing up right yeah it's funny because my friends where i grew up i mean some of the kids they had their parents had a lot of money not on my part of town now we were broke as hell so instead of going to the summer cabin and whatnot, we went to the track, right? So I learned how to read right. the racing form when I was 10 years old, right? And so to make odd money, I would either mow lawns, shovel snow, rake leaves, whatever. And then in between, when I'd go from house to house, I would pass out those football cards, right? So no I'd get a little bit of extra money, yeah. I love that. Um, maybe we'll use that for a flashback for Sebastian's character. <laughs> exactly. Based <laughs> on a true back story. Chicago, shoveling snow and then passing on cards to the houses. All right. All right. You know what? I just found something. That's good. That's good stuff. Hey, listen. I mean, it's, it's based on a true story. I mean, I, yeah. in this case, I mean, it's awfully hard to make that up. I mean, if you lived it, you get it. And it was just second nature. Right. And so whether you're going from this stuff, I mean, even Christmas caroling, we had to do the same thing. And, and my sister always did the singing. I just kind of Millie Vanilli did. So I, I kind of lip synced it the whole time because she was better than me. I couldn't sing. I mean, not even in the shower, but still finding a way to make a little bit of extra money. Right. You score a dollar here, score a dollar there. But before you know yeah. it, you know, you got a little bit of pocket money. Well, the weird thing about this show is um, ever since we started working on it, I can't think of many people I've met, and when they when it got on their radar, they didn't say, "Yeah, that's my uncle, that's my brother, that's my cousin." You know, um, you know. Up until, as I said, it's a very recent thing that this was legal in this country. You know, in the rest of the world, it's a different story. Um, but you know, the, everybody had a guy on some level making book in the very in their family in their in their circle and it's you know it's an american tradition and that's part of what's interesting about this show is that you know um it, there's more to this show than just a guy making book it's a little bit of a metaphor you know it's not that different from a guy who had a taxi cab medallion or a guy in the hotel industry watching airbnb all these things have come along in recent years and they've throttled the premise of a lot of industries um, so, you know, you can be working a, a line of work and wake up the next morning and there's a new paradigm, there's a new app, there's a new model that is all about undercutting how you make your living and all of a sudden your game changes and what am I going to do? Now, the fact is, I don't think legal sports books have put illegal bookmakers out of business at all. Um, that has not been my R&D, but... Um, it certainly has changed things. And, um, you know, I, I, I just, but I do think it's a kind of relatable thing because I think everybody's in a line of work. Hey, as a writer, I was on strike because AI, you know, AI is coming for all of us, right? Yeah. I mean, look at it this way. There's always going to be a guy. Hey, you got a guy. I got a guy too. And hopefully maybe your line will be better from him than I'm getting over here. Cause you know, I got it now. I got to buy the hook that I got to right. buy that extra half point so I don't lose by half a point. And in many, many bookies around, at least where I'm from, I mean, you lose on a tie. They'll say, well, no, 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 you get a push. You don't get a push. You get a push into a trash can. That's about all you get. 
But more importantly, <laughs> right? But more importantly, I mean, if you don't understand the rules, and these are the neighborhood rules, right? So there's there's no universal rule. This goes on neighborhood by neighborhood, depends on where you're at, whether you're in Buffalo, right, or in Chicago or, or New York or New Jersey. It's all the same thing. How about LA? LA's got a whole different set of rules, if you know what I mean. Mm-hmm. Yeah, and also, you know, it's the difference between dealing with the state or dealing with being on the grid with your gambling life or being, you know, in a sort of off the grid, cash only. They're very different approaches to a time honored pursuit. So um, and that's the kind of stuff we explore. We had a blast with in season one. Well, you know what I find interesting about this is that so maybe your bookmaker in the local neighborhood He'll say, you know what, you can Venmo me or, or you can Zell me. Well, at some point, <laughs> I mean, now now the government's starting to say, hey, look, I need some kind of description for this transaction. You can't just say it's always friends and family, right? So, in, in fact, Nick, when we come back, I want to take a, a little bit of deeper look into that because, look, there are tax issues. There are enforcement issues as well. And that's the part that I want to look at just a little bit more because, folks, if you think all of these transactions that you're doing with pick your favorite online betting app, whatever, is all tax exempt, it's a little bit different than when you're making your bet right here in fabulous Las Vegas. In fact, we're going to be back here with the great Nick Bakai in just a few moments here on the Sports Circus. Lots more to come. You don't want to miss this one, folks. Back in a few minutes. That's the sound of sizzling, dry-aged USDA prime Wagyu and Angus steaks from UppercutChops.com. They're best-in-class filet mignons, New York steaks, and the king of all steaks, the tomahawk and cowboy cut ribeyes are the best in the business. Even their prime Wagyu burgers will likely be the best you've ever had. Browse the full selection of steaks and chops at UppercutChops.com from the comfort of your home or on your mobile device. UppercutChops.com delivers all-natural, dry-aged USDA prime Wagyu and Angus steaks and chops directly to your door. Without the hassle of going to the grocery store and fight crowds to pick from a small selection of average at best meats with injected steroids, fillers, and coloring added to look good. Find out what's for dinner at UppercutChops.com or call 702-799-9935 at 702-799-9935, 702-799-9935 or make your selection directly at UppercutChops.com. Hello Americans, it's Uncle Sam here. If you owe $10,000 or more in back taxes to the IRS or state, don't worry. I've got important news that may help you negotiate a lower tax bill. In today's economy, the IRS has released a variety of new rules and is offering more flexible terms to help Americans looking to settle their IRS debt. If you apply today, we may be able to lift your wage garnishments and release a freeze on your bank assets or business. Our team of tax professionals can resolve your case and stop collection actions against you. Even if you've been audited or haven't filed a return in years, they can help. Call right now and find out if you qualify to settle your IRS debt for far less than what you owe. Pick up your phone right now and call us for a free $500 IRS tax review. Don't wait. Here's the number. Call right now. 800-950-2049. 800-950-2049. 800-950-2049. For the last time, that's 800-950-2049. Do you know someone with a drug or alcohol problem? Get help right now. Insurance may cover everything. Stop the drug and alcohol nightmare. Are drug and alcohol problems hitting you too close to home? Get help right now. Insurance may cover everything. 800-831-1560. 800-831-1560. 800-831-1560. That's 800-831-1560. Do you owe the IRS $10,000 or more in back taxes? Are you being audited or investigated? Has the IRS sent you a letter demanding payment? You may not owe what they claim. Make this free call to the tax doctor now. Let them negotiate with the IRS on your behalf. 800-296-1209 800-296-1209 
That's 800-296-1209. Welcome back to the Sports Circus. I'm Roy Firestow. Now it's time to throw it back to Sal... Welcome back to the Sports Circus. I'm your ringmaster, Sal, live in the AMP TV mobile studio, AAMP.TV. This segment brought to you in part by your friends over at PlaceYourBet.Vegas. Check out PlaceYourBet.Vegas for all your wonderful sports information. They seem to pick a lot of winners, somewhere around 84-odd percent against the line for all you people who say, well, that's impossible. It's not impossible if you know how to follow the money. Sal, the bookmaker, knows how to follow the money, and that's exactly what he does follows the money, gets the information out there to the people, and guess what? People end up saying, Show me the money! (laughs) Show me the money is right. And guess what? That information is available to every one of us. If you don't know how to follow the money, check out placeyourbet.vegas. That's placeyourbet.vegas. Or give a call to 702-799-9935. 702-799-9935 for more information from placeyourbet. Dot Vegas. Of course, a nice round of applause for them. Sort of the kung fu applause. Right? We've got a lot of buttons going on here. And yes, it's live. Anything can happen. All right. A big welcome back to everybody listening in on our CBS, NBC, and Fox Sports affiliates, including our friends over in Honolulu on CBS Sports 1500, KHKA. That's home of the New York Yankees and the Alabama Crimson Tide. Welcome to everybody else that's in the greater L.A. market, maybe listening with our friends over in on NBC, all the way up to Seattle, to New York, and a whole bunch of places in between. Atlanta, WDJY, 99.1 FM. Auburn, Alabama, WAUD. That's home of the Atlanta Braves. Of course, a nice round of applause for them. And everybody else on Cox, Comcast, Spectrum, Frontier, Time Warner, Wild Cable TV, and Hotel TV. And social media, everybody watching on Chicago Food Favorites. Yes, we also have a page for food. Make sure that you like, subscribe, follow, put all your food posts on there. Back here with the great Nick Bakai. And Nick has basically done it all. And by the way, folks, he has a wonderful show out right now. In fact, Nick, tell everybody about it in case they're just tuning in once again. It's Bookie. It's on Max. You can stream it. We got the whole first season up anytime you want it. And uh, with Sebastian Mass, Scalco, and a host of others, it's... Uh, and uh, season two is coming. Not it'll be it'll be out in the fall. We shoot this uh, April. We're ready to rock. All right, that's good stuff. And folks, if you don't know what it is, go check it out. It's really funny. You've got a great cast, and it's it's something really relatable. And you know, Nick, in the last segment, we we're talking a little bit about the kind of the costs that come along with betting in yesteryear versus today, but now today live. So if you happen to be in Las Vegas. Right, and you're here at the sports book. You can make a bet. You could show up with fifty dimes, you know, fifty thousand dollars, right? Or, or um, excuse me, five dimes. <laughs> I, I, don't, listen, don't listen to me. My mind is going in ten different ways. Fifty. My point is this: you can put all your money in there without a tax ramification. And now we've seen this with certain boxers that were going into fights. Now, Nick, we saw this firsthand. A particular boxer, a very high-profile boxer, down at the south end of Las Vegas Boulevard over at the M Casino uh, Hotel and Casino Resort. And we saw right before a fight, hours before, a particular boxer dropping $800,000 on themselves in a fight. Why? Because it's all tax-free. What you win and lose, right? There's no tax ramifications from the sports book. However, what about using these apps? What are your thoughts on that? You know, I mean, my understanding is that even in a sports book, if you're betting over ten thousand dollars, you you're you you're gonna have to report some of that. I mean, isn't that if you win, I should say. Um, that's always been my understanding. Um, you know, that's why people like to place those bets under ten grand at a hundred windows. Um, you, you've had a different experience with that? Right. Okay. So as I understand it, being here in Las Vegas, you could show up with essentially any amount of money, even Mattress Mac, betting on the World Series kind of thing. Right. You, right. Could, you could bet millions of dollars and there are no tax ramifications either way. Where you see that 10000 limit is, for example, let's say you walk up to the dice table. So, so I pull a marker from, and I'll give you a, a live story. I pull a marker from, sure. from the Mirage. I said, you know... 
give me 10 G's, whatever. And so they, they give me a, a stack of blacks and, and the lavenders, right? And so I just want to play a little dice, have a little bit of fun. Well, what I did was after, oh, it couldn't have been but maybe 15 minutes. I'm like, yeah, I'm kind of going up and down. I'm like, yeah, you know, I think I may have lost literally 50 bucks out of the whole thing. I said, nah, I'm done with this. Go ahead and, and buy the marker back. And so I counted it down. I think it was like 9,700 and change, whatever the hell it was. So I, I threw in a, a few hundred dollars to balance it out. And they said, well, sir, here's this tax form. I'm like, wait a minute. At one point I was up over, but my, my settlement amount was less than my buy-in. So you can't tax me on the amount that I was over. They tried to tax me on an extra, I don't know, 2,300 bucks or whatever the hell it was. I'm like, no, I don't think so. Right. No, that money is, is lost. And so as soon as the, the MGM or the, uh, well, MGM Mirage, as soon as Mirage at that time pulled that crap with me, I pulled my line from there and I kept it over, only over at Caesars Palace. Because at the table games, yes, what you said is 100% true, but the sports book, there are no rules when it comes to the tax side of it, as I understand it as a player and as somebody that knows a little bit. Interesting. Well, you know, um, you know the, the idea of betting sports and following money is, you know, as you were saying when we were in between segments, one of the more interesting ways of handicapping games. You know, it's, you know, I think everybody, if you think of football as the most heavily bet sport, I think, you know, it, it's like the sport that everybody, most guys in America grow up playing it on some level. Therefore, they think they understand it. Therefore, they think they can handicap it. And I think that's why a lot of guys go into betting football with this sense of, I can handicap the game, I understand the game. And I think if you if you bet football over a period of time, you come to realize if, you, if you're actually analyzing your results, there are other ways to look at it. And one of them is, um, and it's a fascinating thing now, I will say, you know, with DraftKings and um, with FanDuel, they really do show you the betting splits on the numbers now. And you can really see where the public is and where the where you can see where the money is and where the the public is which are often two different things um and you know it, it, it it's one of the things that i find very very revealing um and i do find i'm i'm extremely wary of betting on a game where if 80 percent of the money is on a side I don't really want to be on that side. You know, that's one of the sort of laws of life. Um, and, you know, the public likes chalk and the public likes overs and the public likes a lot of things that I think you come to be very wary of if you're at it for a while. Yeah. And, you know, the top of the segment sponsor was placeyourbet.vegas. All right. So, folks, that's me. I'm Sal the Bookmaker. Of course, you can't see that on my name. It says Ringmaster Sal on it. But reality is this. If you know how to follow the money, I mean, really follow the money. If, if Look, if somebody could tell you, well, I heard so far. I don't want to hear that crap. If you understand how to go to the sports book, a particular book, not just any book, you've got to go to certain ones. Like back in the day, Nick, over here in Vegas, it was Little Caesars. Little Caesars set the line, but the line was solidified from the Stardust back in the day, from the boys back home in Chicago. Right, right? And, right. and, and remember, the, the movie Casino was about those guys from my neighborhood where I grew up. That's my snow shoveling route, my leave raking route, my lawn mowing <laughs> route. I swear to you, that, that is my neighborhood. And so the, the characters portrayed, at least three of those in that neighborhood, were actually portrayed in that film. But reality is, unless you're going to the right casino, watching for what you're supposed to be watching, if you're not looking at the whales that come in here that move the line, and folks, let me give you a quick idea of what this is. So here you've got... Joe or Josephine, whatever, right? We would say politically correct, right? So somebody comes in, somebody goes to the window at a particular sports book, and they've got their face towards the window. And then you've got a second person facing the other direction. Now, what does that tell you? Well, first of all, they're probably carrying a bag or they've got a bigger coat on where they could take stacks and stacks and stacks and put them out on the window. The reality is you got one person watching the back while the other person is making the bet. And as soon as that bet is done, watch the board and you'll find a line will move 
Now it depends. If it's Super Bowl, for example, in a local hotel, if it's more than 50,000, the line will move a half a point. If it's double that, obviously it'll move a full point. But typically in the local casinos where the action is hypersensitive because the odds maker, right? You've, you've got these guys that are these handicappers that are actually analyzing all the money flow in this. And don't forget, the one thing we're missing in this is we're missing, and this is my own thing, I'm not saying this actually happens, but I have every reason to believe that there's influence in the game. There's influence in the game, and it's usually the cheapest people on the field. Now, I used to play sports, and I've seen things that I just scratched my head. I'm like, how the hell did that happen? And we've all seen, Nick, we've seen games on TV. We're like, how did he miss that call? Are you kidding me? And so we've seen things. So I say, watch that money. You got to know how to watch it. Place your bet.vegas does that for you. But you watch the money, watch the line. And remember, the opening line is always the true line. Because the odds makers, they had already put it right there at that particular line. Like the Super Bowl was two and a half when it opened up. Right at close at one and a half, two and a half, anywhere between one and a half, two and a half, depending on the house. It didn't matter because some things happened in there that made you scratch your head and say, how did that happen? Kind of like that low field goal attempt, the extra point attempt. When a guy had kicked a 55 yarder, and why is he kicking low trajectory uh, extra point attempt when all you gotta do is pop it right over the defensive line? Another story for another time. Anyway, Nick, when we come back, I wanna talk more about that gambling side of it because th really this is about bookie and i want to really focus this on bookie because that right now is your shining beacon of light and it's very fun folks if you haven't seen it nick's going to come back and he's going to tell you all about it in just a few minutes here on the sports circus don't go anywhere you don't want to miss this one as i said before thanks Hello Americans, it's Uncle Sam here. If you owe $10,000 or more in back taxes to the IRS or state, don't worry. I've got important news that may help you negotiate a lower tax bill. In today's economy, the IRS has released a variety of new rules and is offering more flexible terms to help Americans looking to settle their IRS debt. If you apply today, we may be able to lift your wage garnishments and release a freeze on your bank assets or business. Our team of tax professionals can resolve your case and stop collection actions against you. Even if you've been audited or haven't filed a return in years, they can help. Call right now and find out if you qualify to settle your IRS debt for far less than what you owe. Pick up your phone right now and call us for a free $500 IRS tax review. Don't wait. Here's the number. Call right now. 800-950-2049. 800-950-2049. 800-950-2049. 800-950-2049. For the last time, that's 800-950-2049. If you have diabetes, listen up. If you have insurance, you can qualify for a continuous glucose monitor. With a CGM, you can continuously track your levels and trends and spend more time in range, significantly lowering your A1C. More importantly, a CGM eliminates the one thing most people with diabetes hate, painful finger sticks. Order your new continuous glucose monitor today. If you use insulin and if you've seen your diabetes care provider within the last six months, you may qualify for your own CGM right now. We'll do all the insurance paperwork and deliver your new CGM at little or no out-of-pocket cost to you. Medicare and most insurances will cover your CGM, so don't wait. Have your insurance handy and call the Aptiva Medical CGM Health Hotline right now. 800-320-2751. 800-320-2751. 800-320-2751. That's 800-320-2751. If you're tired of the fake news and tired of all the left-wing BS and agendas out there, if you want to do your right part to clean out the swamps and hit the lefties where it hurts, their pocketbook, we all know the president and his cronies hired thousands more IRS employees and agents. Now that's not very American. There's a way to fight back. Fellow conservatives out there, call American Tax Relief. They can help you pay less to the IRS. Don't you give a penny more to spend to the left-wing agendas. If you owe $10,000 or more in back taxes or haven't filed your taxes in years, call my friends at American Tax Relief. They'll give you a 100% free introduction to their program. And trust me, they're on the right side of your freedom. 
pay the IRS less. Call now. 800-958-2157. 800-958-2157. That's 800-958-2157. Paid for by the tax doctor. Hey everyone, Dave Jackson here, ESPN Rules Analyst on ESPN Hockey, and you're listening to the Sports Circus. What's going on? It's Nick Bakai here on the Sports Circus. If you were a girl in 1990s America, you know me as Salem Saberhagen and that's Sal's favorite character ever. But if, unlike Sal, you're a real man, you know me from ESPN and you might know me from the Max Show bookie. I'm not on it, but I wrote it and created it starring Sebastian Maniscalco. It's hilarious. It's real, it's vivid, and you should watch it. Sun Max, all eight episodes, season one. Binge it now. You'll thank me later. All right. <laughs> hey, listen. I watched the early ESPN stuff, kind of like the bad beat stuff. I, I watched all that. Give me a Look, break. If I don't give you a little grief, here. what's the point of the exercise? Right, and just for that, there you go. <laughs> just because we can. Oh, no. Folks, this is a real treat to have Nick back on the show here. And look, he's got a great show on there. Look, he got a whole season. He said binge, binge watch it. And if you're feeling anything that we're talking about, if you've ever even been around it or been curious of it, maybe all these films you see on TV, oh, you have this love affair with these, these mob movies, whatever, whatever. There's a lot to those films that maybe some of it's kind of meant to be inside stuff if, you're, if you grew up around it. But other parts of it, it's for the mainstream media. And they've romanticized Nick about these things. That's why we have the Mob Museum here in town, right? Yeah, which you know, which is kind of interesting because those stories, in my opinion, I don't know nothing. I didn't see nothing either, and I didn't hear nothing. But those stories are kind of half truths. One of my friends is the former chief probation officer appointed by Lyndon Johnson way back in the day, and he gives tours over there. His name is Gene Sedoian. Gene's a great friend and is a, a friend of the sports circus. But I've heard some of the real stories because my friend Jerry, rest his soul, he used to try to keep those guys out of prison. And Gene was trying to put them in prison. I mean, the whole thing was kind of ridiculous, <laughs> if you know what I mean. But still, we have this love affair as Americans with these kind of films. And now, now we have a series. Now we're going to have season two of your show and so forth and so on. What can we expect out of season two? Well, we're going to pick up, we sort of left our characters in a little bit of a pickle at the end of season one. But, you know, what's interesting about our show is, um, you know, in in today's world, the bookie is, you know, it, the old myth is that they were leg breakers and that they were sort of hell to pay. And I'm sure there were, there are <laughs> scenarios <laughs> where that was true, but it's not really the case. You know, a bookie isn't the guy who's trying to to shed light on himself and call attention to what he does. It's it's sort of crime light. You know, this is a guy who cops aren't looking to waste their time on this. Um, this is, you know, these are guys who are trying to sort of get by. Um, most guys in this line of work, if, if a guy gets into big trouble with them, they get blackballed, but they don't get killed. They don't get injured. They just kind of get cut off, which for a degenerate gambler isn't that is a slice of hell, right? And we, you can't bet the ends. You, March Madness, you're not betting it. We have a guy in season one who's hiding from them up in the treehouse in their backyard <laughs> and making his wife face the music right at the front door. And they come and they confront him, and they say, "You know what? We're not going to hurt you, but you're 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 cut off. You're done." And he's like, "You can't do this to me. It's March Madness." And that's, you know, it's like, I think that guy would rather have a broken leg than not being able to bet Valpo, you know? Right. Um, So, you know, but that's the reality. And so what we've got are guys who are in this sort of moral twilight, this sort of, 
you know, crime adjacent world and things get pretty funky for them. But we're trying to also hug reality, you know. Um, it's a big funny show, but it's also it's the same thing. These guys also have wives and children and they're trying to balance their lives just like the rest of us. And as much of the comedy comes from that as what it's like for these guys, you know, look, their jobs are like it's not unlike people who are it's like cops or plumbers or people who literally their day is you know on collection day going and knocking on doors and not knowing what's on the other side of that door each house call is in its own adventure and we have a lot of fun with that too and we also have a lot of fun with these guys being in la these guys are taking bets from everyone from a mansion overlooking the pacific ocean in malibu to the funkiest parts and we travel we cover the waterfront and um and and so the city and the, the city like LA that covers so much territory is a big part of this show too we had a blast you know what's interesting when you said somebody getting cut off from bets and whatnot i think of back in the old neighborhood i think of guys with this <laughs> right and, and then the yakuza <laughs> hey folks if you don't know what this is right here this <laughs> is what in the neighborhood is known as a bad debt that means they don't pay their bill to the bookmaker they don't pay their bill to the boys they don't pay their bills but what this says is this person could never borrow money on the street again or make a bet so honestly, I mean, I know guys like this, that they've got this. And I've heard the stories. Oh, uh, you know, it was uh, frostbitten and crap like that. No, <laughs> you just didn't pay your bill. I mean, I already know. And you're lucky. The only thing you lost was this because they don't want to lose his business to a degree. Because if he shows up with cash, hey, cash in, cash out. That's one thing, right? It's almost like a, a secured credit card, right? Or you, you have terrible credit, but now you have cash in hand. So, okay, I want a credit card. Well, this way here, I'm going to give you... I don't know, maybe uh, $500, whatever. And I want to bet on whatever. Okay, great. Put your money up front, right? So it's just like going to the casino. But no credit is extended to guys like this. And so do you right. have any guys like that in your show? No, I mean, we, we, we have guys who welch. We have guys who are shady. And we have our guys get into all sorts of strange hot water. Right. But the reality now is, look, a guy bets with you on credit because you're an illegal bookie. But the whole point is that there was no money. You're not out money to begin with. Betting with a guy is a premise, right? Right. I bet. I said, Sal, I want to bet with you. I'm going to bet this NFL football season with you. And, you know, I come to you a month and a half later. We've hit our magic number and I'm down to you. What? So much money that it's like, that's the number we agreed. It's pay up. And I say, I, I don't have it. Well, it's not like you forwarded. You didn't loan me that money. Right. That money doesn't exist. Right. And you then have to weigh the decision. Do you want to cut my finger off and get in, potentially have me rat you out? Hey, there you go. You want to get your cigar cutter out on me and have me rat you out to the cops and end your career and end your business and end what is a very lucrative line of work because just like that, that virtual lovely casino behind you bookies do well betters tend not to do well do you want to blow all of that on one guy um because he welches and and get heat on yourself or do you eat it you know we have a whole speech in an episode of season one where you know it's it, it, sebastian t explains it to one of his employees saying every business factors in shrinkage it's just like you got a department store they're going to be shoplifters you know but it's up to you as a bookie to vet the people you're taking action from and if you get it wrong you know what do you want 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 that and do you want to do time and shut your business down or do you want to do you want to say well you know what i was wrong to take next action right. and i'll i'll absorb the loss and i'll continue to can to take bets from all these other people who think they know how to bet football and baseball and hockey and and basketball and and continue to pay my car off for me. Well, you know, here's a bit of uh, of interest here in our last couple minutes of the segment. In my experience of book and action, placing bets, hockey, as I have found, is the easiest one to win on. 
And there's a lot of reasons for it. Number one, there's not enough I, action. I have had the same experience, frankly. I, I think I love to bet football, but I always get healthy during the NHL season. Right, because there's there's not a lot of action, and the odds makers don't really know too much. They know, but they don't know. So there's only mm-hmm. so much play, whether it's a puck, puck and a half. And there, there's a lot going on on the ice. And hockey is a lot more honest than certainly than basketball. We've we've had Tim oh, Donaghy on yeah. the show talking about fixed games, right? Oh, really? Oh, yes. Yeah, and, and Tim was talking We all know what about, happened, yeah. You know, we, he was talking about the 13 months he went to prison. He said he got beat up almost every day because a lot of people <laughs> you know, in prison, I mean, they lost their asses on the games that he was – compromising so to say but what i find interesting is you have like an amount as your settlement amount instead of a settlement like on tuesday morning right after monday night football right Mm -hmm. usually you have your settlement day win lose or draw whatever but you you allow them and on the program to keep them with a running total if it hits this amount or this amount that's where your settle up is that's the way it's always worked in my experience is that we have a number you know okay and if you if you prove that you're okay at that number I might increase your number, but yeah. it starts at a, a number that's not going to kill you. Right. Yeah. Cause I, I know people that have gotten in way in over their heads and just on one day. And it's because of what you're saying. Maybe that that's system crazy. Been a that's little bit just better. bad business, right? That that's like, you know, you know, it's, as opposed to saying, well, you know, I'm going to, I'm going to put a ceiling on you till I know who you are. I mean, that's, you know, that's, well, that's what that's the credit card companies do, right? Yeah. Yeah, they do. Tell you what, Nick, our final segment's coming up. When we come back, maybe we can talk a little bit more about how credit is extended to people on goodwill. What do you think? Okay. All right, back here in a few minutes with Nick McKay, writer, producer, director, bookie on Max. Check it out. Watch (laughs) the whole season while we're on break. Don't go anywhere. Hello Americans, it's Uncle Sam here. If you owe $10,000 or more in back taxes to the IRS or state, don't worry. I've got important news that may help you negotiate a lower tax bill. In today's economy, the IRS has released a variety of new rules and is offering more flexible terms to help Americans looking to settle their IRS debt. If you apply today, we may be able to lift your wage garnishments and release a freeze on your bank assets or business. Our team of tax professionals can resolve your case and stop collection actions against you. Even if you've been audited or haven't filed a return in years, they can help. Call right now and find out if you qualify to settle your IRS debt for far less than what you owe. Pick up your phone right now and call us for a free $500 IRS tax review. Don't wait. Here's the number. Call right now. 800-950-2049. For the last time, that's 800-950-2049. Can your IRA stand up to the next financial crisis that our top economists are saying is at our doorsteps? By allocating a percentage of your IRA into physical gold and silver with a tax-free rollover, you can diversify and safeguard your holdings from turbulent markets and economic downturns by putting your IRA back on the gold standard. Find out how to safeguard your assets with a tax-free rollover with a Genesis Gold IRA, the only IRA that can hold physical precious metals. Call now for your free gold and silver report. Protect your IRA today with one simple phone call and learn how to qualify for up to $10,000 in free silver. Call Genesis Gold Group, empowering faith-driven stewardship. 800-932-5517. 800-932-5517. 800-932-5517. That's 800-932-5517. If you served in the Marine Corps, by now you know about the contaminated water problem at Camp Lejeune. If you were stationed or worked at Camp Lejeune from 1953 to 1987, you probably have a lot of questions. We have some answers. You could be entitled to compensation. Billions of dollars are being allocated to pay for damages to anyone stationed at Camp Lejeune during that time. Unfortunately, it appears that officials may have known the contaminated water problem existed and did little to protect their men. The Semper Fi Code was not honored. 
If you or someone in your family has developed a serious illness, including various forms of cancer, call this Camp Lejeune legal support line right now. You can't turn back the clock and change what happened, but you can certainly call right now and learn your rights as a Marine. Here's the number. Call 800-335-7196. 800-335-7196. That's 800-335-7196. Paid for by Legal Alert Line. Welcome back to the sports circuit. I'm Al Bubba Baker, quarterback breaker and the rib maker. (laughs) (laughs) Welcome back to the Sports Circus. I'm your ringmaster, Sal, live from Las Vegas in the Amp TV studio, TV. Folks, this segment is brought to you in part by Nick Bakai. And here's Nick to tell you all about Bookie. <laughs> uh, log on to Max. You can stream Bookie the whole first season anytime you want. You wake up at 3 a.m. and your brain isn't letting you sleep. It's Bookie time. Uh, the, you know, you, you, you're home uh, one in the afternoon with nothing to do. Bookie time. I'm telling you, it's the best show. Um, Ted Lasso can go to hell. This is the show. This is the show. The Bear, one best comedy. Not a comedy. Bookie is. Don't get me rolling. Hey, Bookie Bookie is fun stuff, and it's real stuff, too, but it'll keep you laughing. Thanks, everybody. Yeah. Hey, hey, <laughs> they're they're like me dissing the bear. That'll get me in heat. Yeah, That's going to make hey, it Hey, listen, popular. it's my show. Let them bring in the heat on me. That's okay. Because, again, like anything else, it's just a phone call, buddy. Don't worry about That's that. That's right. That's right. Help is always a phone call away. I always tell people, don't let me get to a phone, if you know what I mean. <laughs> hey, that, that's how it is back on Taylor Street in Chicago, you know, Mulberry Street in New York. You know the story. It is what it is, right? Yes, I yeah. do. Okay, so Nick, more about how you came to put Bookie together. What was it that drove you to do this? Because, I mean, it is real life, but something inside of you said, maybe you and Chuck want to put something together that says, you know what? This is real life, and a lot of people can relate to it, especially with all this online betting and whatnot. Now, betting is really mainstream at this point. The timing was really good because of that, because, you know, as much as guys like you and I know, and this may have been a part of our lives forever, um, it's a new it's a new thing in a lot of people's worlds. And so there was a sort of a ubiquitous moment to grab um, and also, I did love the angle of, you know, the, the, an old school bookie looking at these new um, legalized online app driven sites in, in, in the, what does this do to squeeze this guy? There's something relatable to that. Like I said earlier, this is like a lot of worlds where like there's a new paradigm coming in and squeezing old business models a lot of people's careers are going through that it, but it really started with sebastian maniscalco um who's you know brilliant and funny and blowing up he's he's going out on a live nation tour this year where he's playing every massive arena and uh, i mean he's as big as they get and um he and had come into chuck's world in terms of the possibility of developing and chuck reached out to me i've worked with chuck for quite a few years now and and he said you're interested in talking to me about something for sebastian and i said absolutely we started in the thinking in terms of traditional multi-cam sitcom and then we kind of broke left and part of it was seeing sebastian in the irishman where he plays crazy joe gallo and holds his own with De Niro and Pesci and some real heavyweights, and in a crime context and in a dramatic context. And we just thought, mm, let's do something different here. And I had been playing around with the bookie area. And, and you know, Chuck and I are fans of Elmore Leonard and that kind of fun, crime, light-ish areas. And we just we were sick of saying, I think we were sick of writing shows with a family gathered around a living room couch. And we said, let's do something different. 
We pitched it to Sebastian. We were very, very lucky that he said, I get it, let's do it. And we started to write this thing. And, you know, Omar Dorsey plays his business partner, and Omar is magnificent. I'd never worked with him before. And it's these two guys in business together in this changing world. And, um, uh, you know, it, it, it turned into a whole different animal. And we, you know, obviously it worked out. They want more. Well, what I like is there is a heavy dose of reality in this, too. And this is the mm -hmm. part that, look, folks, if you're gambling on pick your favorite sporting event, whatever it is, and if you don't understand the mechanics behind the scenes of this, you really need to take a closer look at really what's going on and about that money flow. And I'm talking about now with the money flow that goes through the casinos. I mean, look, Nick, I have seen things that I just scratch my head like, wow, to me, this is my opinion, they're cheating in plain sight. I mean, it's remarkably obvious. We see it all the time, but people are like, oh, you know, that was just a crazy play. It wasn't a crazy play. These are things that we saw. I alluded to that in the Super Bowl. But the reality is things happen now because, in my opinion, I have no proof. I claim to have no proof, and I have no proof. The reality is we see things that we just are like, did that just happen? Yeah, that did just happen. Why are the lineup cards turned in 90 minutes before kickoff or 60 or, or 90 minutes before the first pitch in baseball, this kind of thing. Well, they say, well, the sports books need to be able to adjust the line. That's a bunch of, you know, pick your favorite word. I don't believe it's that way because I know what I saw as a kid growing up. And I saw a lot of guys like this laying off the action, too. And if you don't know what that means, if the line is out there at, at seven, for example, for a football game, maybe it's the Buffalo Bills seven over the Bengals. Right. And they win by by six. Well, well, let's just say it was um, six and a half. My, my point is that person laying the action off will basically say, all right, I'm not going to turn all that money into the bookmaker. I'm going to lay some of that off. I'm going to book that myself and I'm going to adjust the line by a half a point. Now, I've seen people, guys that I knew as a kid, end up in dumpsters because of stuff like that. Two to the chest, one to the head. That's reality, folks. If you don't know this stuff, believe me, this actually happens. Now, Bookie is a very cool, lighthearted, but real show about these kinds of things. Now, it's not going to show the gore and the crap like that. You don't need to because the people that are watching, they know, but uh, the people that actually know, but the people, the general audience that are watching, like, wow, this is remarkably entertaining. And that's what I like about it. And I've seen these episodes. This is good stuff, Nick. Thank you. I appreciate it. Yeah, we're really happy with how it turned out. You know, you can write these things and you can do the best laid plans. And sometimes you look at the result and you go, oh, you know, we just we did not get the fish in the net. Um, but this one, I know I speak for Chuck as well. We're really happy with it. It turned out um, tonally right because it is. It's really funny. We said we're making comedy. We didn't, you know, we didn't say we're going to do one of the what I call these whimsities where no one's laughing, but it's not quite dramatic. You know, it's like, no, we're, we're trying to be balls out funny, but we're not trying to twist something out of what could be plausible and real in their scary moments and their gritty moments and real moments. So I, I'm really happy with it. Yeah. And, you know, we think back to some of the earlier stuff you were involved with, with Chuck, with Two and a Half Men. And I love the fact that Charlie Harper had a gambling side to him. And I love that he got right. his nephew Jake involved in it. And that to me, that was a whole different spin that, that really made me pay closer attention because that spoke to me as a kid. Yeah, yeah, it's really funny. He did get involved and wrapped up in that. And it's one of the interesting storylines within our first season. Um, you know, we, uh, we had a scene in the first episode. Since the, we're based in L.A., we thought, well, you know, they're going to have some famous clients. And we wrote a scene that, you know, had them tracking a guy down who had the money. And we had placeholder scenes with different names and celebrities. And one day Chuck came in and said, I think it should be Charlie Sheen, which I was like, really? Uh, because, you know, those two guys had a rather uh, world famous, explosively bad ending to their professional relationship with tiger's blood and winning and accusations and everything and they hadn't they hadn't connected since um but i know chuck enough to know that he was ready to turn that page and um 
you know, I thought, well, that's really interesting. It's your call. And he reached out and Charlie was more than ready to turn the page as well. So it was, and, and listen, Charlie's one of the great uh, deft comedic actors there is. And so um, we had this really interesting thing where these guys were in each other's presence for the first time since that whole meltdown. And we got this great material, this great scene out of it too. It was really special. Yeah, and you know, from everything that people have read and heard or whatever, these are two consummate pros working yeah. on something professionally. And folks, it's business. At some point, you'll get past, well, I'm a fan of this team, I'm a fan of that team, and the players, they hate each other too. No, they don't. It's work. At the end of the day, yes, Packer fans and Bear fans don't like each other, but many of the Packer players and the Bears players are what? They're friends. It's just business. And they're sometimes on a taxi squad, seemingly back and forth to these teams. And this is what happens. It's just work. And so for me, I was happy to see Charlie as a part of this because, I mean, I think of him and I always think of the, the comedy, the gambling side from that other show, right, which you certainly were a part of that. But I love to see it incorporated with what you're doing now. Absolutely. And, you know, listen, Charlie Sheen is a guy who bets sports in real life. And, you know, he plays himself in this show. It's completely organic. It was really special. Yeah, that's good stuff. Hey, listen, we've got a couple of minutes left here in the segment. Tell everybody about your show again, how to follow it, how to follow everything, Nick Bakai, et cetera. Uh, it's, the show is called Bookie, uh, starring Sebastian Maniscalco, Omar Dorsey, uh, Andrea Anders. We've got Vanessa Ferlito. Um, I mean, it's, a, it's something else. It's on Max. Uh, which is, uh, you know, like HBO adjacent. You can get the Max app. You can stream it. All eight episodes of season one are there anytime you want. And we have season two. We just finished writing it. We're going to start shooting in a few weeks. We're raring to go. It's wonderful. Check it out. That's exciting stuff. Hey, what about that social media you said that wasn't so good? <laughs> well, you know. <laughs> Look at me. Yeah, you know, I'm I can, I'm still I'm I, giving you I every I, chance you I, I connected can with you on a yourself. rotary phone. You know, my God, it's a miracle. But I no, I got I got the X, I got the Facebook, I got the I got the what's the one with the pictures, the Insta. So listen, I'll get this out there, baby. I'll get this out there. That's good stuff. And folks, in case you missed any part of this episode, you could go to the sportscircus.com and click on any one of those podcast platforms this is not a podcast it's a regular show however we also watch our language but we do take hard breaks because we have to but you can pick up the entire show and it'll be available i don't know very very soon so as soon as it goes through post-production which give it about an hour or so but you can watch or listen to the whole thing even on social media you can watch it on facebook if you're my friend or nick's friend or even on chicago food favorites check that out you'll be able to pick it up there or at the sports circus on facebook as well nick this has been a lot of fun and again thanks for coming on to the show as always it's a pleasure having you I had a great time. Anytime. It's always fun with you, Sal. Thanks. That's great stuff. And next time we'll get you to do more Salem Sager, Saberhagen because right <laughs> I, got, I got nothing right now. You're killing me here. <laughs> All right, boss. Well, you have yourself a great day. And, folks, we'll see you in about 23 hours from now. So long, everyone. Americans, it's Uncle Sam here. If you owe $10,000 or more in back taxes to the IRS or state, don't worry. I've got important news that may help you negotiate a lower tax bill. In today's economy, the IRS has released a variety of new rules and is offering more flexible terms to help Americans looking to settle their IRS debt. If you apply today, we may be able to lift your wage garnishments and release a freeze on your bank assets or business. Our team of tax professionals can resolve your case and stop collection actions against you. Even if you've been audited or haven't filed a return in years, they can help. Call right now and find out if you qualify to settle your IRS debt for far less than what you owe. Pick up your phone right now and 
call us for a free $500 IRS tax review. Don't wait. Here's the number. Call right now. 800-950-2049. For the last time, that's 800-950-2049. 